Constitution in Gaza was made to protect members of the House from potential violence. Well, joining me now from Surrey, former Scotland Yard detective and founder of Diffuse Global, it's uh, Philip Grimbell, Grindbell. Thank you very much for joining us here. Um, First of all, can we just explore what security is available for MPs in this country? Because we certainly don't see the same kind of security, say, for American politicians. No, good afternoon. And there's a good reason for that, because the level of threat and the type of threat is very different. But for a number of years, all members of parliament have had a comprehensive security package uh, free of charge to them which effectively covers the security of their homes, it covers the security of their constituency offices, and if they have a separate London home, um, because they're a, a non-London or home counties MP, then it also provides security for that. And in more recent years, that's included a security guard uh, that they can use during constituency surgeries or other meetings at their constituencies. Yeah, it's really interesting, is it, Mr Grindell? What did you think of Sir Lindsay Hoyle's comments earlier this week? He was moved to tears with his statement that he said. He said he never wants to go through a situation where he picks up a phone and finds a friend, another MP, um, from whichever side has been murdered by a terrorist. The threat to MPs is unprecedented now. What would you say is influencing this? Well, I'm not sure that the threat is unprecedented. I think there's a pattern here in that when certainly when I was there in Parliament, we had to work really hard with senior political figures to um, get them to drum down the rhetoric and stop spreading fear. Because when we look at the actual threat, certainly when we did the threat assessment during the heat and toxicity of the Brexit period, actually the threat assessment came down as low. And that needs to be taken into context because when we talk about threat, we're talking about the intent of people who are looking to attack and the, their capabilities. And where I think we go dramatically wrong and where we went wrong before and where I think we're going wrong again now is that we're confusing the concept that people who make threats. And so there's, there's, there's no doubt that MPs are inundated with threatening and abusive and intimidatory uh, communications, be it via their emails, phone calls, letters, and to a lesser degree, social media. But what we need to understand is whilst that makes them very anxious and it causes fear, those people are not the people that will actually attack. And we can prove that. And so what we need to do is separate those that, that are, are potentially a physical threat. So those people that are planning and may attack an MP, as opposed to those who are, um, as we said, communicating and causing fear and anxiety. Because what we need to be doing is actually being sort of science-based, and so that MPs actually feel calm and they feel reassured and they, they feel safer. And that is by making sure that they have the proper security in place, that they understand the level of threat against them for what it actually is, and that the noise, the, the, the communication noise, is dealt with properly because many people are committing offences by those communications. But actually, we need to make sure that they understand that those are not the people that are going to attack. When we've looked at all the attacks, and this is based on research that the US Secret Service did, and the author of that research is the person that shared this with me and taught me, taught me it. In 50 years of US Secret Service research, they found that at no time had the person who'd been attacked been previously threatened by that person. That, that research has been repeated. I've done it here in the UK. I've looked specifically at the attacks on all the MPs over the last... 25 years. And we need to put that in context. Because as, as awful as it is, we've had two MPs killed and one member of staff. Now, that's a low uh, likelihood. So, but in all those cases, not once has the person that attacked actually communicated or being threatening to the person that they fundamentally attacked and, and end attacked. So we need to be really clear about that because I think what's happening is we're conflating the volume of abuse and nastiness, if you like, with an actual physical threat and they're not the same thing. OK, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us here on Sky News. Donald Trump is...